Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia News Line and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 9th of January. PM Modi holds bilateral meetings with world leaders ahead of vibrant Gujarat summit. US designates Pakistan and China over severe violations of religious freedom. And re-elected Bangladesh PM Hasina terms opposition BNP as terrorist party. And now for all the details. India on Tuesday rolled out the red carpet for hundreds of domestic and foreign investors, ministers and diplomats from over 130 countries as it hosts the vibrant Gujarat Global Summit this week. Prime Minister Narendra Modi held talks with visiting dignitaries including presidents of Mozambique, Timor-Leste and the CEOs of Suzuki and AP Moller and Maersk. Foreign investors have bet big on India since PM Modi came to power in 2014 with the likes of Apple, Samsung, Kia and Airbus expanding operations. The summit will present a chance to attract investors to sectors such as chip making and electric vehicles manufacturing, with PM Modi set to hold a series of meetings. It will present him a chance to assure investors about his business-friendly policies and bolster India's reputation as an investment destination just months before the 2024 national elections. And amid the India Maldives row, former ministers of Maldives, Dunya Mamoon and Maria Didi have said that they are deeply concerned about the developments and the language used against India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi, which is not acceptable. Mamoon reiterated the foreign ministry statement condemning the incident and urged a swift resolution to the inflammatory issue. Meanwhile, Didi called India as a 911 call for the Maldives and added that India has been a reliable ally, assisting in various sectors, including defence, and criticised any attempt to undermine the long-standing relationship. I was deeply concerned to see the developments, and I think our foreign ministry and the foreign minister has very clearly stated that though we have freedom of expression, that um, the kind of language that has been used is obviously unacceptable, and personally, I also believe that um, this element of racism and derogatory comments is something I strongly condemn. We are a small country who are friends with all, but we cannot deny that we share borders with India, we share many, uh, similar security concerns. Uh, uh, India has always helped us. They have been helping us even in the defence sector with capacity building, providing us with equipment trying to make us more self-sufficient. Meanwhile, in an apparent snap to India, Maldivian President Mohammad Muizu is on a five-day visit to China this week. Regarded as pro-China, Muizu became president in November after winning on his India Out campaign platform, under which he called New Delhi's huge influence a threat to sovereignty. Moving on, the US has designated Pakistan and China as countries of particular concern for engaging in and tolerating particularly severe violations of religious freedom. US Secretary of State Antony Blinken in a statement said that governments must end abuses such as attacks on members of religious minority communities and the places of worship among other violations. Pakistan has long been blamed of being tolerant towards rights abuses, including marriages after forced conversion, violence and intimidation, and over its draconian blasphemy laws that are often misused against minorities. Meanwhile, China is accused of forced labour and a mass internment campaign targeting the Uyghur community, along with abuses such as forced sterilisation and cultural repression. Taliban's appointed Prime Minister of Afghanistan, Mullah Mohammad Hassan Akund, on Monday said Kabul has no intention of inflicting damage upon or creating problems for Pakistan, Geo News has reported. He said Afghanistan would not give permission to use their soil against Pakistan or any other neighbouring country as Sharia does not allow hurting anyone. However, he said Pakistan needs to change the cruel attitude towards Afghan refugees. The remarks came during a meeting of Taliban leaders with Pakistan's JUIF chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman. 
Notably, ties between Islamabad and Kabul have plunged in recent months to the lowest in years, with Pakistan claiming Afghanistan provides safe haven to militants who train and carry out attacks in its territories. Kabul denies the charge, saying that Pakistan's security is a domestic issue. Moving on, Bangladesh re-elected Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina on Monday termed the main opposition Bangladesh Nationalist Party as terrorist party as she played down the election boycott by the BNP. Hasina said each political party has the right to take a decision and the absence of one party in election does not mean democracy is absent. The BNP boycotted the polls after Hasina refused its demands to resign and allow a neutral authority to run the general election. Hasina, who has repeatedly condemned the protest by the opposition, said BNP have been involved in violent protests, killing hundreds of innocent Bangladeshis, so it cannot be called a democratic party. The election took place, they couldn't stop it, they tried their best to do it, but they didn't. So how do you define that? You never mentioned about that, how many people they killed till now. It is not only this year, 2013, 2014, 2015, they did the same thing. More than 3,000 people burned down, 500 were killed, and still people are suffering in the hospital. So how do you define that they are democratic party? They are terrorist party. It is terrorist activity. Meanwhile, the United States has expressed concern over the credibility of the Sunday polls and said they were not free and fair. Washington remains concerned over the arrest of opposition leaders and by reports of irregularities on the election day, the U.S. State Department said in a statement. Hasina, who has swept to a fourth straight term in power, has been accused by critics of rights violations and suppressing free speech and dissent. Nepal's Ministry of Health and Population has confirmed cases of Omicron subvariant GN1 in the country. In a statement, the ministry said that seven cases related to the new subvariant have been found after a gene sequencing procedure. It further advised all concerned authorities to step up necessary screening and surveillance. The three waves of the pandemic from 2019 to 2021 claimed about 12,000 lives in Nepal. The World Health Organization classifies GN1 as a separate variant of interest, given its rapid spread around the globe. Several countries, including India, China, Indonesia and Malaysia, have reported uptick in the new coronavirus cases. And India's holy town of Ayodhya is witnessing an increased footfall in tourism and a growth in business ahead of the consecration ceremony of the Grand Temple of Lord Ram, slated to be held this month. Take a look. Shopkeepers and excursion providers in India's holy town of Ayodhya are witnessing an increased footfall and a growth in business ahead of the consecration ceremony of the Grand Hindu Temple at the birthplace of Lord Ram. City officials expect about 4.5 million tourists a month once the first stage of Ram Mandir opens on 22nd of January. The ruling BJP, which had made construction of the temple a national campaign pledge, is spending billions on rebuilding Ayodhya with a newly inaugurated international airport, parks, roads and bridges in the offing. Apart from becoming a pilgrimage destination for India's 1.1 billion Hindus, visitors can also enjoy excursion activities. The Guptar Ghat in Ayodhya has been transformed into a popular spot with water sports facilities and modern amenities. चीज के लिए यहां से लोग गोवा जाते हैं या फिर मतलब अदर स्टेट जाते हैं जो भी है वाटर स्पोर्ट्स के तो वहां जाके से आप गोवा अयोध्या में आके आप यहां ट्राई कर सकते हैं गुप्तार घाट दैट्स ऑल इन टुनाइट सेशन वी विल सी यू सेम टाइम टुमारो गुड नाइट टैग टीवी ब्रिंग्स यू डेली न्यूज़ बुलेटिन फ्रॉम इंडिया ब्रेकिंग न्यूज़ एंड व्यूज फ्रॉम इंडिया